Hello and welcome to another edition of Sun Dragon Tips and Tricks. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in downtown Brevard, North Carolina. And I've been wanting to make a video for a few weeks now, but life has been a little hectic. So I've made a bunch of videos for the Papillon, for the butterfly shawl. I can show you how mine's coming here. Mm, yeah, <laughs> very pretty, right? And I've made a bunch of videos for things called the red square and the orange square and the green square and the blue square, which are all, oh, that's the wrong side. This is the right side, which are all of these bubbles, I like to call them. The reason they're shaped the way they are is because of something called a short row. A short row is where you stop in the middle of the row. It's a bunch in the middle here. You stop in the middle of the row and go back the way you came. You, you have a short row, it's not a full complete row. And to make that happen without a giant gap in it, you need some way to close that gap. I've made a video on German short rows, which is my favorite. But for this shawl, I don't actually use a German short row. I use what's called a classic wrap and turn. Couple of caveats on this. I use it on this shawl instead of a German short row because this is what's called garter, where you're knitting every row, so you get these bumps on every row, and the wrap and can hide within those bumps. Like over here on our last video, you see these gaps. Those are created by a wrap and turn. It's where you're slipping a stitch and you're wrapping it. Now I realize I have not done a video that's just on the wrap and turn, and when you start the papillon, this is your first time that you do wraps and turns. This down here, the next section is where you first do a red square and an orange square. So you're doing wraps and turns before you do those squares. So I need to make another video to fill in the gap for people who have not gotten here and need help here. So this is that video. Now, disclaimer, this is a wrap and turn only for knitting every row, garter stitch, and I am not gonna talk about picking up your wraps because in the garter, I actually prefer just leave them, just not mess with them because I have not had, personally actually had very good luck picking those wraps up. That's a classic way to deal with a wrap and turn. When you come back to it, you pick up the wrap and you knit it with the stitch that was slipped. And if all this sounds crazy, just watch the rest of the video, see how it goes. But I'm saying that in that, that's my cat coming in, um, <laughs> in that I don't pick up my wraps if I'm doing garter. So this is not a video if you're doing what's called stockinette, knit one row, purl one row, and wanna learn how to do a wrap and turn. This is specifically for the garter stitch where you're knitting every row and you're not intending to pick those wraps up because that's what all of this, none of this has a wrap that is picked up. So let's get to it. So again, this is a wrap and turn, often abbreviated as a W and T in garter, which means you're knitting every single row. There's no purling involved in garter. Even though I will often call things in garter purl bumps because the backside of a knit stitch is a purl stitch or looks like a purl stitch. So I'll talk about the bumps as purl bumps often, often. I will probably forget and do that here. So, but it's where you're knitting every row and we are not picking up our wraps. So again, if you're searching for a video that teaches you about picking up wraps, I would suggest Very Pink Knits, Andrea Mowry perhaps, some other people, but I have not yet made a video on that. So this is for use with something called short rows. And again, a short row is where if we were going along and then we came back and we turn around in the middle of that row and go back the way we came, if you don't do anything, you have a gap. You will have a hole there. A wrap and turn it involves a slip stitch. You come out here and you wrap the stitch that's out here and then you turn your work to go back. And what that does if you come back over and keep going is it keeps that from being a hole. This little guy right here is the wrap and turn. It should, I mean, it's almost impossible not to have holes of any kind, but it should keep it from being a big glaring hole. It fills in the gap of turning mid row. With garter, 
just reading this stuff right here, all rows knit. The wrap hides in all the bumps because garter, I can pull this out again, garter has bumps everywhere. When you're knitting every row, you have this reversible fabric, look at just what's right there, where there's bumps on both sides. So your wraps will get buried in all that. And so for the most part, it's a personal choice if you wanna use a German short row, a wrap and turn, or a wrap and turn where you pick up your wraps. For the Papillon, which is one of the main reasons I'm making this video, I don't pick up my wraps. I just let them nestle into all the bumps and I, I just keep going. I do not pick up and work the wrap. So if you see instructions and other patterns talking about picking up those wraps, it may indeed be something you need to do on those, those patterns. I don't feel like I need to do it on the Papillon. Here is how I do a wrap and turn. You may find different instructions in different videos. Here is how I do a wrap and turn when I'm doing the Papillon. Six easy steps. And what I will make note of is the odd steps, you're moving your working yarn. The even steps, at least two and four, your slipping stitches. So it's move, slip, move, slip, move, turn. Don't worry about remembering all that. We will practice it several times together. So just to read through these, you're gonna stop, you're gonna bring your yarn to the front between the needles. When you're knitting, your yarn should be in back. Now, the pictures I've drawn for this are for holding the yarn English style in your right hand, but the same steps will work for Continental where you hold the yarn in your left hand. The yarn may look like it's in a different place, the working yarn, but it will still work. So the first is to bring the yarn to the front between the needles, just like you were setting it to purl. Then you're slipping a stitch from your left needle to your right. And I'm gonna put in here the language of purlwise. And that really just refers to you when you slip stitches here, as in most of the time you're slipping stitches, you want to move it straight across without twisting it. If you slip it like you're going to knit the stitch, you will twist it. So stick your needle in like you're going to purl. We'll see that in the second section of this video. So slip the, the stitch that's on the end of your left needle over to the right. Bring the yarn to the back between the needles. Slip that same stitch from your right needle back over to the left. Bring your yarn to the front between the needles and turn the work. A few things I'd like to point out for directions. We're bringing our yarn to the front between the needles. It should be in back if you've been knitting. We're slipping a stitch from the left needle to the right one. Bring your yarn to the back. That's the opposite of where it is. Slip that same stitch from your right needle back to your left. Bring your yarn to the front between the needles, which again is the opposite of where it should have been if everything's going smoothly and then turn your work. When you turn your work, when you're done, there's a couple things to notice. Your yarn is where it needs to be to keep knitting, it, which is in back. Even though it was in the front on step five, when you turn it around, it's now in the back. Your slip stitch is now on your the needle in your right hand and it's completely throttled, I like to say. It's completely encircled by your working yarn. Let's take a look at some pictures of that and then let's do it. And note here that I've written up above, I've drawn the pictures as what it's gonna look like right before you do the step. And then I'm gonna draw some arrows for what the step is. And then the next step, you'll see it done. So step number one, here's how it's going to look if we're in garter and we've been knitting along and we've stopped. And step number one is bring yarn to front. between the needles. So this yarn, this working yarn, which is in the back, we're gonna bring between the needles to the front of the work. We're not going over a needle or around what have you, we're coming straight between the needles. And you know, I like to color code things. So let's make this working yarn that we're doing all this stuff with, we're gonna make it blue. 
it is going to come between the needles to the front, not over, not around, straight through the middle. Step one, that's what we're gonna do. This picture right here is what it will look like when we've done that step. The working yarn will be hanging in front. And step two, if you remember from over there, we can't see it right now. We're gonna slip the first stitch from our left needle to our right needle. And the stitch we're slipping is this one right here, so we can keep track of it. I'm gonna make him pink. And he needs to move from this needle over to this needle. I usually do that by sticking my right needle in and slipping it over. When we do that, it will look like step three down here, or the beginning of step three. Let's color code it. Here's that working yarn that we move to the front. And this stitch has just been slipped over. It has not been worked. It's just been slipped. Step three is to take that working yarn We're gonna take that yarn to the back. So it's here and we're gonna go straight through the needles. Oh, squeaky board today. Straight through the needles to bring it to the back. Again, this, is, this should be an action you're familiar with if you've done any ribbing. We're moving front and back, but instead of working a stitch, we're wrapping it. It will look like this once you've done it. The beginning of our complete wrap is right here. It has come around and it is now behind. If you're a continental knitter, the yarn may be going this way, but it will still be behind the needles. And it is wrapping that stitch that you've slipped. Now step four is to slip the same stitch back to your left needle. So that means this pink stitch needs to come back over here. Here's what it'll look like once that happens. Our slip stitch is back over on the left needle and the working yarn has gone all the way, or almost all the way around it. It's still on the back side of your work. And I should mention, it might be clear, it might not be. When I talk about back and front, I'm talking about when the work is facing you, what is closer to you is front and what is further away from you is the back. No matter what is the right side or wrong side of your fabric, I'm only talking about what is the front and the back of what you are currently working on, what is facing you and what is further away from you. So step five is to bring that yarn, which is in the back, it's behind these needles, to the front. And again, we are going between the needles. So this is just coming straight through. I'm gonna make some purple here between the needles. I've put two pictures over here on number six. One is, this is how it will look when you've completed step five. We'll have our slip stitch back where it needs to be. And the working yarn has come all the way around and completely surrounded that stitch. It comes over, around, behind, and back to the front. Step six is to turn. Step six is to turn your work around. And when you do that, when you take the needles and turn the work around, your needles will change which hand they're in. And your slip stitch is now over on your right needle. And again, the working yarn has completely encircled that stitch. And the neat thing is your yarn is already where it needs to be to start knitting back that way. Your yarn is in back, which is where it should be if we're doing garter and you're knitting every row. So at that point, you can just continue to knit whatever number of stitches the directions tell you to knit. The last thing that I'll tell you is as you start to knit back this way, you will notice when you look back that there is a gap. There's a little gap between your slipped and wrapped stitch and the stitch before it, after it, whatever you want to call it. It sucks your wrapped stitch closer to the knitting work where the, in the direction you go. 
So when I'm counting in the Papillon, I will say, here's where, here's the gap. The next stitch after that is the one I've wrapped. It'll look like it's hugging really close to the next stitch. If I'm trying to count how many stitches I've knit since I did the wrap and turn, I don't want to count that first one because that is the wrap and turn. I want to count the ones that I've knit. That can often get people off when they first start doing the papillon. Let's see what this looks like with real yarn. So here's my garter and it's a garter when you knit every row you're going to get these bumps that are the back of knit stitches and the front of knit stitches on both sides. So I'm going to knit along. And again, I hold my yarn English style over here on the right. But this should work for Continental Knitters too. Let me know if you need to see a video holding it Continental. It's not my forte, but I can do it. So let's say I'm gonna knit a couple more stitches here. And now it's time to do a wrap and turn. So remember, step one, bring your yarn to the front between the needles. Step two is to move the first stitch from your left needle over to the right. And I'm going to do that purl wise, putting my needle in straight. If I did it knit wise, it would twist it. I would just want to move it, not twist it around. So I'm going to move it straight over. Step three is to take this yarn which is hanging in front and move it between the needles to the back. Step four, this slip stitch, I need to slip it back. And I will, off, again, stick the needle straight into the stitch, not twisting, straight in, slide it back over. Step five, move my yarn to the front. Step six, turn around and get ready to knit the other way. Couple of things I'll show you. Here's that gap I was talking about, but it won't be as much of a hole when we come back to it. This is my working yarn. It has gone in completely around this stitch. This is my slip stitch. So let's try knitting back the other way. Let's do some short rows. I'm gonna knit a handful of stitches here. Again, if we look back, here's our gap. These stitches look really close to each other. The one that is really close, but next to the gap, that's our wrapped stitch. I'm gonna go, this is not like the red or orange square where there's a certain number of stitches to go. I have videos on those. Let's go to right here. Let's say this is where we wanna do our next wrap and turn. Remember the steps. One is to bring the yarn to the front, bring it to the opposite side of where it is, slip, from your left needle to your right. Not a knit stitch, it's one from a previous row. Bring your yarn to the back. Slip that stitch back over to the left needle. Yarn to the front. Turn your work. Again, that last step, bringing your yarn to the front, when you turn your work, it's already in the back where it needs to be. Here is our Slipped stitch, completely wrapped. Let's knit back the other way. There's our gap, and this is our last wrap stitch. So if you need to go like four beyond the wrap stitch, there it is. If you need to go fewer than the wrap stitch, you can count off of that. I'm gonna stop right here. Again, steps one, bring your yarn to the front. Two, slip the stitch from the, the closest to the point from your left needle to your right. Three, bring your yarn to the back between the needles. Four, slip that stitch, that same stitch you slipped on step two, back over to your left needle. Five, bring your yarn to the front, always bringing it to the opposite side of where it was last seen, last moved. Six, turn around. Now we're gonna have two gaps. Here's my gap over here. I'm three stitches from it. Let's do another wrap and turn. Again, take the yarn from where it is, 
move it to the other side between the needles, move it to the front, slip the first stitch on your left needle over to the right without twisting it, take your yarn, which is now in the front, move it to the other side, which is the back. That stitch that you slipped over needs to go back to its home, so slide it back over to the left needle. Take your yarn to the front, because it was in the back. We've completely encircled this stitch now and turn your work. Now I want to show you, I've got two gaps over here. I'm about to have two gaps over here. With the Papillon, because it's hiding, I mean, you might not even be able to see those wraps buried in all the bumps from your garter. So I'm going to come over. Here's what I do in my Papillon. I do not pick up the wraps. That's a wrap right there. I don't know if you can see, there's extra yarn. Here's the what I call the pearl bump, the back of the knit stitch. Here's the wrap. I don't even bother with it. I just keep knitting. Same thing here. There's extra yarn here. There's a wrap. I'm just going to knit to the end of my row. And let's go back and take a look at it. I still have gaps over here from the wraps and turns because I just started going from the end. But see how this isn't flat anymore. There's extra yard, there's extra rows in here. If you look really hard, you can see these lumps, but they don't disfigure the piece at all. They're not that noticeable because of all the other bumps. So let's knit back across the other way because this will happen either direction on your Papillon. On this side, there's no gaps. There's nothing to worry about. I've already closed over them. As I get towards the end of my little row here, I've got a gap here and a gap here. I'm just going to knit. I'm not worrying about the wraps. They might look different on this side. I am trusting they will be hidden in all the bumps. If this was stockinette, if I was knitting a row and purling a row, you would see a line across my V's. But since it's garter, it's not going to show up. And this is now thicker in the center than it is on the edges from my wraps and turns. And again, you may see them if you look really hard. And even in here, there's it doesn't look as bunched up as down here. Some of that is because it's being pulled by what's on the needle. If I kept going, it would start to blend more. And there's always blocking to help that out. But I just leave it as is and knit straight across it once I've done my wraps and turns. So thanks again for joining us today for basic wraps and turns in garter, where you're knitting every row and you don't need to pick up your wraps in things like the Papillon. This is especially helpful in the Papillon shawl, here is where mine is currently, the one I'm currently working on. And step one is this little line here. Step two is this big V. And you do wraps and turns before you get to red and orange squares. And that was the first time I talked about wraps and turns on my channel in that way. So I hope you find this helpful. Now people who are starting their Papillon shawls can watch my videos in order. I'll try, I'm gonna put this video in the Butterfly Papillon playlist that I've made. I've got a knit playlist, a crochet playlist, uh, a knitting 101, just starting to learn knit from scratch, and a crochet 101, and I also have a Papillon one because I find a lot of people find those videos helpful, specifically when they're knitting the Papillon. There are a lot of other popular patterns that there are stitches that I could help elucidate what is going on with them. So let me know if you'd like to see videos on another topic. I've had some people recently asking for, or maybe we're misunderstanding about, okay, so how do I knit a sweater and how do I know when to do X, Y, or Z? I am a firm believer in following patterns. And so my advice will probably be find a pattern you like and follow it. If you like making things up as you go, that is fantastic. I may not have the right videos for you. I may have videos for certain techniques when you're doing that. I have had some recommendations of understanding, speaking of short rows, understanding the basics of how short rows shape a neck. And I could talk about that in 
theory, but not necessarily roadmap for you how to do it in practice. Again, I follow patterns. As an owner of a local yarn shop, I test out patterns so I can demonstrate to people at the shop, here's what will happen if you follow this pattern. And I love people's creativity if they are venturing out and making one up as they go. I would say some of the easiest way to tackle that is make a lot, follow a lot of patterns, make a lot of sweaters to start get familiar with that idea. And then you can have the confidence to experiment with that. On that note, thank you also for everyone who has been joining in the past month or so. Our numbers are escalating and it's wonderful to see. Please drop suggestions under here in the comments for videos you'd like to see. If it's something I feel confident I can do justice, I will add it to my list and we'll see when I can make one. You also may want to check out the Sun Dragon Sideshow. That is my other YouTube channel with my assistant Liz and we talk about the projects that we're working on and we gab about yarn and we try to sell you stuff once in a while, let's be honest. And um, we sometimes have sales associated with subscription numbers or you can find out about current sales at the shop. This channel I feel like is much more of, a, you. I never know when someone's gonna be watching it. So it is not necessarily as relevant to talk about sales and promotions on it. But thank you all so much. Uh, we have hit a thousand subscribers and that's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all for your support. You can also support us monetarily over on Patreon. If you have so much yarn in your stash, you're not going to need to buy anything from our shop for a while. But you'd like to support the work we do, you can see the patrons listed at the end of this video. And you can go to patreon.com slash sundragon if you would like to support the work that we're doing at Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in Brevard, or that I'm doing here. Subscribing, though, is a wonderful way. Commenting, liking, all of those things is a wonderful way to help this channel grow as well. And it doesn't cost you a dime. So, thank you again. I hope you enjoyed this. And may your crafting be filled with joy and confidence. Bye-bye now. Yes. Where are we going? Should I follow? <laughs>